Hi guys, welcome back again to my YouTube channel. My name is Lovely and I make Philippine travel updates. So, just last week, the Department of Tourism announced that the Philippines will open to all countries and foreign travelers by April 1. This includes countries that are listed under EO408 for non-visa required and for all travelers or foreign tourists under visa required countries effective April 1 of 2021 and that's good news guys. Now let's just check what are the general travel protocols by April 1. So let's start off. Now only fully vaccinated foreign nationals are allowed to enter the country effective April 1. From the recently allowed, we have the visa-free countries, the 157 countries, um, foreign with 9A visa, and an entry exemption document, uh, foreign travelers with other types of visas, and the recently added the visa required countries not listed in EO408. Also, it was announced about the resumption of visa issuance by the Philippine embassies and consulates without arrival quotas, and the entry of passport holders from Hong Kong SAR and Macau SAR, and additional countries under the reciprocal agreement with VAXERT. PH. So these are the topics that we are going to be discussing in this video. So please stay tuned. So before we proceed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to get updates on my next vlog. Let's continue. Now the following are the general protocols by April 1. Now foreign tourists can or have the option to provide or present a negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours prior to flight departure from the country of origin or a laboratory-based or clinic-based antigen test taken within 24 hours prior to your flight departure from your country of origin. Now, if you are currently in the Philippines and you are, you might be looking for an accredited uh, DOH accredited clinics or laboratory clinics, I highly recommend the Toxicare Molecular Diagnostics. This is in partnership with the Philippine Airlines. I, I made a separate video on this. You can like, check this out in the link below. And in this video, we will, I'm going to be discussing about the cost, the operating hours, the location of the testing centers in Manila, and the payment options available for the taxi care. Now, just a brief highlight uh, with Philippine Airlines in partnership with the taxi care Philippines, please note that they have testing center in Pal Gate 3, located in Andres Avenue, Pasay City. They are open Monday to Sunday, 24-7. They also have a laboratory testing at PA Learning Center or the PLC in Manila, open from Monday to Sunday, including holidays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then we also have PA Gate 2, located at Naia Terminal 2 North Wing Departure Area. Now, please take note that in PA Gate 2, they can only accommodate antigen tests for uh, 700 pesos with results released in 30 minutes. They are open Monday to Sunday, including holidays, but only from 2 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now, the fixed amount or the fixed rate for the RT-PCR across all testing centers is only 2,599 pesos, and the release will be within 24 hours, okay? Now, Testing available at Toxic Care is by drive through or walk in, and the payment options are through cash and Philippine money, debit or credit card, GCash, PayPal, WeChat, or Alipay. And you can pay that on the day of your test, or you can also pay that ahead of time before your schedule. All right. So upon entering the facility, for example, 
um, today is before your testing schedule, you will be presenting a valid ID, your file ticket, payment confirmation, that is after your successful registration, and then our QR code indicating successful registration to the PAL Laboratory Partner e, uh, CIF form. This is an online form, a registration form for the PAL and for the detoxic hair. Now, for non-Filipinos undergoing a COVID test via detoxic hair, you will also be presenting as an additional requirement the photocopy of your passport and proof of accommodation of residence in the Philippines. Okay, so that's part of the testing. Now, how about the resumption of visa issuance by the Philippine embassies and consulates? Now, the good thing is they don't have arrival or quota arrival. So, I'm just going to be showing you some uh, of the consular offices found in the USA. We have one in Washington, D.C. We also have one in Guam, in Chicago, Illinois, in Hawaii, in Houston, Texas, and in San Francisco. Now, the business hours is usually from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday, except Philippine and U.S. holidays. And they can only accommodate, they don't accommodate walk-in, they accommodate only by appointment. So if you have questions in the screen, you will see the telephone number so you can contact them and their email address as well. Now, the Philippine Embassy is reminding the public to be vigilant of scams or against the scammers and fraud schemes claiming to be the officially sanctioned by the Philippine Embassy Consulates General. So please be mindful to transact only under the legitimate website of the Philippine Consul Embassies. And if you are planning to book an appointment, it should be separate or they are required to book an appointment for each applicant. And you are also encouraged to book for an appointment using the global online appointment system to be secured for a slot for a date and time that you choose for a visit to the consular section of the Philippine Embassy. So in your screen, I have I have a list down the website for the Philippine Embassy contact information. Now let's now move on to the op to the opening of the Philippines to all foreign tourists from all countries. What does it mean? There are three categories. Now, let's first start off with the Filipino or dual citizens entering the Philippines by April 1. And these are your things to consider. Now, Filipinos or dual citizens are not required to have a Philippine visa to enter the Philippines. And their passport must also be valid. And a passport or, for example, if you are Filipinos who are currently abroad and you need to travel back to the Philippines, so you're not, you can enter the Philippines even if your passport has less than six months validity, if you are Filipinos and dual citizens. Now, for dual citizens traveling with U.S. passport, the dual citizenship ID or certificate must be presented for entry to the Philippines. Now, for Filipinos about for the vaccination status of Filipino citizens and dual, Filipino nationals are allowed entry regardless of your vaccination status, okay, whether, whether you are vaccinated, partially vaccinated, or unvaccinated, you can still enter the country starting April 1. Now, for fully vaccinated passengers, must also have a national digital certificate or proof of vaccination against COVID-19 recognized under IATF regulations. For Filipino nationals who are unvaccinated, partially unvaccinated an individual whose vaccination status cannot be validated, you will undergo a five-day quarantine until the release of your negative RT-PCR test on the fifth day of your arrival. And you will continue your self-monitoring until the 14th day. Now, Filipinos or dual citizens have the options to take or present a negative RT-PCR test 
or an antigen test taken within 24 hours. Now, if I am a Filipino citizen, can I, and I tested positive from abroad, can I still enter the country? The answer is yes. Filipino nationals who have recovered from COVID-19 but test positive for the 48-hour pre-departure RT-PCR test may nonetheless enter the country provided that you present a positive RT-PCR test taken not earlier than 10 days but not later than 30 days. And also, the positive RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours prior to date and time of departure from the country of origin or port of embarkation in a continuous travel to the Philippines. Okay. Filipino nationals about the COVID testing as an additional, you will also need if you are if you have just recovered from COVID, you need also to present a medical certificate issued by licensed physician stating that the Filipino national was asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe, or critical of COVID and has completed the mandatory isolation, no longer ex infectious, and have been allowed free movement or travel, okay? That should be written in your medical certificate. Now for Filipinos, dual citizens, quarantine, uh, quarantine process, if you are fully vaccinated, you no longer need to be quarantined. You just need to self-monitor for seven days. But if you are partially vaccinated or unvaccinated, you would undergo the five day or six day facility-based quarantine until the release of your negative RT-PCR test and continue the monitoring until the 14th day. Just the same. Now for the return ticket, no need to present a return ticket to leave the Philippines, but and also you are not required to secure a travel insurance for Philippine passport holders not required also for dual citizens traveling with a U.S. passport and dual citizenship identification certificate. So you no longer need to present or provide secure a travel insurance. But you need to register to the One Health Pass online form upon or before arriving to the country. That is for the Filipino citizens and dual citizens. How about former Filipino citizens or what we call the balik bayans? These are your travel requirements. Now, uh, balik bayans or former Filipino citizens, these are citizens of former Filipinos using foreign passport but listed under EO408 or listed under the visa-free countries including the USA. You can travel to the Philippines without a visa and can stay in the Philippines for a one year under the Balik Bayan program. Former Filipino citizens need to present a copy of your birth certificate or a copy of an old Philippine passport for Balik Bayans. Now, for Balik Bayan privilege is also extended to accompanying foreign spouses and or children regardless of age of Filipino or former Filipino nationals provided for that they are traveling with their Filipino or former Philippine spouses or parents and are using foreign passports under EO 408 or from countries, visa-free countries. Okay. And also your foreign spouse, the foreign spouse of former Filipino citizens must present a copy of your marriage certificate issued in PSA copy or apostilled copy. Children also must present their birth certificate in PSA or in apostilled if issued in the USA. For balik bayans, you need to also provide a valid for at least passport, valid for at least a period of six months at the time of arrival to the Philippines. For the vaccination status, former Filipino nationals and foreign spouses' children must be vaccinated except for minor below 12 years old traveling with their fully vaccinated parents. Fully vaccinated passengers must have a digital certificate of proof of vaccination 
under the recognized by the IATF and passengers whose vaccination status cannot be independently validated must undergo a five-day facility-based quarantine until the release of your negative results on the fifth day and continue to self-monitor until the 14th day. All right. Okay, so for former Filipino citizens or what we call the balik bayans, COVID testing, so you can use or you can present negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours or an antigen test within 24 hours. So those with positive RT-PCR test results are not allowed entry. Return tickets are not required also for balik bayans and that is extended to the family members traveling with them, including the foreign spouses or children or parents traveling with them. Okay, for the quarantine naman, for balik bayans, your quarantine, quarantine facilities, for fully vaccinated, you no longer need to quarantine. But for unvaccinated and partially va unvaccinated, you shall be required to undergo facility-based quarantine until the release of your negative RT-PCR test on the fifth day. For former Filipinos about travel insurance, can balik bayans you must present travel insurance? The answer is yes. You need to secure a travel insurance to include coverage of medical expenses, including COVID-19, while in the Philippines with a minimum coverage of 35,000 US dollars for the duration of their stay in the Philippines. You can check with your insurance provider if the policy that you will have or you will be accepted in the Philippines to pay for your medical expenses while you are in the country. Plus, you must secure a One Health Pass registration before arriving to the Philippines. And the third one is for foreign nationals. I think everybody has been really looking into this. So let's check the recent travel requirements. Now, for entry of foreign nationals, vaccinated nationals, under the visa required countries may enter the philippines visa free for a visit under 30 days now for countries not listed or these are countries not listed under eo408 or what we call as the visa required countries foreign spouse parents children of former filipino citizens or balik bayans who are traveling with them and who are not included under EO408, you will need to apply for a visa. This also includes the foreign spouses, parents, and children of Filipino nationals who are not included under EO408 will need to apply for a visa. You need to secure a visa, guys, if you are not under the visa, if you are under report, this record countries before entering. For foreign nationals, your passport validity must be valid for at least six months at the time of arrival. And U.S. nationals traveling to the country for business and tourism may enter without a visa for a stay of 30 days. Only vaccinated and partially vaccinated nationals are allowed to enter. And this is something that we need to validate because this information has been updated in the U.S. Embassy website or the Philippine Consulate in the U.S. website, but unvaccinated na nationals are not allowed to enter the country. Not yet. Fully vaccinated passengers, except for minors below 12 years old, traveling with vaccinated parents must provide proof of vaccination recognized by the IATF. Passengers also whose vaccination status cannot be independently validated shall be required to undergo facility-based quarantine for five days until the release of their negative RT-PCR test on the fifth day. And if you are coming from the U.S., the U.S. CDC vaccination card is accepted and recognizes proof of vaccination. Now, for the testing, you can use RT-PCR test result within 48 hours or antigen test within 24 hours. The return ticket is also required. You can book no later than 30 days from date of arrival in the country except for foreign spouses, children of Filipino and former Filipino with balik blind privilege under Republic Act 9174 traveling with them. All right? Now, 
for the quarantine, of course, fully vaccinated foreign nationals cannot, shall no longer be required to observe mandatory quarantine. But just only the qualified, unvaccinated, and partially vaccinated will undergo facility-based quarantine for five days until the release of their negative RT-PCR test on the fifth day of arrival. Foreign nationals must present a travel insurance coverage for medical expenses with a minimum coverage of 35,000 US dollars during their stay in the Philippines. You can ask your insurance provider if the travel policy or the policy that you will have to be accepted in the Philippines to pay for medical expenses just in case you get sick in the country while you are in the Philippines. But Filipinos, non-Filipinos, Balikbayans, former Filipinos, and all foreign nationals must uh, register to the One Health Pass. You can visit this link. This is free of charge. Beware of scam websites asking you to pay for it. This is free. You're not supposed to be paying anything for this because you'll be required to do that upon boarding upon entry to the country. All right? So... Another update starting April 1 is the entry of passport holders from Hong Kong, SAR, and Macau for a period of not exceeding 14 days. And also, countries with reciprocity agreement under Vaxer PH, they recently added Croatia, Cyprus, and Nepal. And recently added, we have Bulgaria, Iran, and Panama. For purposes of arrival quarantine protocols, as well as for interzonal, interzonal movement, so when you are, when you arrived in the country. Now, the last question is, can unvaccinated foreign tourists enter the Philippines by April 1? The answer is no. Uh, it's not yet allowed. So if you are unvaccinated, whether you, can, you are from uh, visa-free and visa-required countries, so as long as you are unvaccinated, you are not required or you are not allowed entry to the Philippines except for uh, immediate family members of former Filipinos, OFWs, or foreign Filipinos, dual citizens, and Balikbayans. All right? Okay, so that's it for today, guys. I hope if you find my video helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more updates. I'll see you next time. Bye!